welcome back and we've worked out a number of communication issues hopefully we'll have it all working just perfectly as they say in uh, the british lingo tickety boo we're going to just try to make sure everything is perfect we have uh, uh jonathan i guess it looks like jonathan is trying to contact me uh again so jonathan you want to uh you want to contact the studio gcn studios uh and that'll ring right directly through to gcn studio too uh and uh we should be fine. So, uh, this is, yeah. This is Josephine. Um, and that's what I, I read. Is that the wrong one? Yeah, I do the GCN underscore studio underscore two. Yeah, I just use the one that I just sent over. And that'll connect uh, Jonathan directly to Genesis okay. Studios, okay? okay? Okay, okay. Okay, so we're having a minor technical issue there. What we're going to talk about today with Jonathan is really interesting. He's been doing a lot of studies since we had him on last year about uh, the place of America in we call the end times. It's not the end of the world, by the way. A lot of negative people out there thinking, it's the end of the world, it's the end of the world. No, it isn't. It's going to be, let's say, reshuffling the deck. Uh, the lease for the dark side is over, or about to be over. And we're going to talk about the position of America. A lot of people don't think America is in the Bible. In fact, it's the center point of it. Uh, and we'll talk about all the scriptural issues. We'll kind of put it together in kind of a, a nice, neat package. Uh, with those specific setting dates, but give you a lot of signs to watch for that'll give you an idea of why we tell you that we're in the end times. And uh, a lot of things are going to be brought to resolution. Uh, you know, the genetic heritage of the, the fall of mankind with the shortening of human lifespan, uh, a, a, a toxic world, uh, <clears throat> a toxic world that's going on. Uh, all of these things will, you know, we're going to deal with specifically. So <clears throat> I think that that should. Uh, that should help tremendously. Uh, so, uh, okay, there we go. So, um, <clears throat> there we go. So, uh, when we when we talk about America, first off, we have to think of America as Ephraim America, which basically is the like a, an archetype of the other house of 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 Israel. A lot of people think of the of you know the chosen people. There's no such thing as, quote, a chosen people. God does the calling, we do the choosing. But there's two houses of Israel. And God's going to bring back into resolution a lot of issues that haven't been settled through history. And uh, part of that settling requires us uh, to recognize that the founders of America are basically the northern tribes that used to be considered the house of Ephraim or Joseph. So I like to refer to America as Ephraim America. And then, of course, the Current House of Israel is also apostate. It's run by Sabbatean uh, Jews. There are some rabbinical Jews, but those are following the Talmud uh, and the Zohar. Uh, and there's some very nasty parts of those, which are completely against the Pentateuch, or the first five books of the Bible, by uh, written by Moses under God's direction, and the uh, prophets, the ancient prophets of, of Israel. So uh, those issues are really important for people to understand that in order for you to uh, to get a correct view of things, you have to uh, understand who are the players. Now, here in America, within a matter of, I think it was less than two weeks, Obama received the Nobel Prize in Medicine as a Messianic leader. And, of course, the globalists had already selected him back from the time of he was selected by Zbigniew Brzezinski to be a, uh, a prophetic figure in American history to change the fundamentally the nature of America. And we're not just talking about providing you know, affordable health care for people, affordable housing, affordable food, etc., jobs. Obama was there to transform the whole world to a new world order. And the most powerful nation on earth militarily and financially is still America. Even nations that are strong in one way or another, like China or Russia with its nuclear forces, all have major things missing, so they really are not superpowers. There's only one superpower. And when we get uh, the issues sorted out in terms of who's what, America is, if you want to call it, a, the major player that's going to regulate the financial system. The current financial system may decay temporarily into a downward spiral, which, by the way, they want it to happen, because when they do so, they'll basically choke off the rest of the world to follow through with a authentication or biometric currency. And uh, having been at Shriver Air Force Base, having seen all the different parts of the technology that America has, the mark of the beast will come from the United States of America, not Canada, not Brussels and the beast system there, not from Moscow, not from Jakarta, not from Japan, 
not from South Africa or anywhere else. It's going to come from America, the only remaining superpower in the world. There are military superpowers like Russia, but their economy is fragile. Uh, there are uh, countries that have rising production to produce toys and, and things for your home, but they're at least a decade away for the Chinese to even think about challenging America, and that's if they didn't know about our level 10 weapons. So <clears throat> we will, uh, uh, we're still having some technical problems there trying to connect with Jonathan. I think he's continually trying to connect with me rather than the studio. Uh, if he uses the studio connection, he will uh, uh, just get this message here. Here's. Yeah, so we have a situation where we're still having technical problems connecting with Jonathan. So um, what I see happening in America is we have a, a situation where Obama is pushing John Kerry uh, to have a peace treaty probably by this spring. We know that the uh, next year is the Shemitah year, the, the last in the seven-year cycle. Uh, we know that Shemitah years in the past when there wasn't a proper release of debt uh, caused judgment that God brought on the ancient Israelis and will bring judgment on us and probably a financial crash. Uh, this is all by design, printing money like crazy and giving it to oil uh, empires and countries and doing other things uh, such as spendthrift programs. For example, Obamacare, and we had a conference last night uh, through the Association of American Physicians and Surgeons that specifically talked about this, the criminalization of medicine, the top-down control, the forced eugenics, the forced referral for abortion, the forced toxic polypharmacy, uh, the, the complete tyranny of, of Obamacare, where they hired more than 20,000 IRS agents and didn't make one new residency position or expand functional medicine, made it uh, basically, uh, you know, a total mess. It basically made it almost impossible. Uh, uh, so I think that I think that's the uh, issue uh, that uh, we we have a situation where America is going to be counterbalanced by Russia. We can see the moves in the last few weeks where Vladimir Putin is exerting strong military force. There's a, there's absolutely no attempt whatsoever by the West to stop Putin. Uh, and, and, of course, I call it the feather duster sanctions that were done. They could do sanctions that could actually put a stop to Putin's expansionism very quickly, but would have preserved his financial interests and control over the pipelines. But no, they're going to allow the expansion because uh, they they want this bipolar world where Russia has control of the military forces in China and all the Muslim countries that are t tied and allied directly. And if you look at the, uh, we talked about this earlier today before the show, with uh, um, uh, Bill Salas, and he specifically talked about the different wars that are coming. I believe some of these wars are going to precede the final peace treaty, and they'll probably be marched out in the next few uh uh, in the next few, if you want to call it months, where if there isn't a peace treaty, there's almost certainly going to be an expanded war against Syria, who is now beating the Al-Qaeda terrorists. They're being paid for by Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and other Arab states. And, of course, ultimately by the Europeans and Americans that are arming them, giving them satellite radios and other connections and support. We even have a salary for the Al-Qaeda terrorists that are going in to try to do regime change in, in uh, Syria. Uh, and, of course, they're killing and treating nuns like they're enemy combatants of Christian churches there and killing Christians. Uh, this is horrendous. And, of course, uh, uh, our foreign policy is totally schizophrenic because it's not for Americans' good. We are in foreign entanglements, which, of course, we were proscribed against by the early founding fathers of America. And what I see happening is that America will uh, um, pay for it. Again, the House of Ephraim is America. Back in a moment, hopefully we'll make our connection correct this time. We'll try to connect with Jonathan Gray in just a moment. Welcome back, and uh, we'll just continue this dialogue until we see if we can get a connection with Jonathan. Uh, I'm not sure what the technical issue is, but we're still having some problems. Um, when I talked to Mark Biltz actually earlier today, uh, yesterday, and actually talked to his staff today, uh, it fits in perfectly with the uh, the timelines of the blood moon. So we don't want to set dates, uh, definitely don't want to set dates, but we want to give you uh, a template so you can actually look at these issues and start to analyze what the signs are. The signs are we're seeing the signs of the wars that were set up in Ezekiel 
uh, the wars of, of uh, Jeremiah, etc., in the Middle East, and we'll be going over that with Bill Salas in about a week. Ah, we've got Jonathan. Uh, Jonathan, it's wonderful to have you back. I actually connected live. Yes, Bill. Good to hear you. Oh, gee, you got a fantastic signal, too. I think you were right next door. Huh, <laughs> that's good. Right, take That's really good. Okay, so uh, you've been studying for the last number of months since we lost our connection last year, and now it's wonderfully reconnected, so it should be a technical miracle that happen now regularly here to have you back on. Very good. Um, I've literally taken, studying the place of America in the end times, and I wrote the, uh, the book uh, Clay and Iron. I received it actually in 1988 and published it in 1999 with the Prophecy Club. People can still go to Amazon or eBay and find the books. Believe it or not, even new copies, so God knows who's printing it. Um, but it's going to be majorly updated, and I'll be releasing the... It'll be in several smaller books. The first book will be Clay and Iron, The Time of Sorrows. In other words, we're in the time before the last seven years. Clearly, with all the things going on with the Fukushima Daiichi and the Makondo drill site and the economic chaos since 2008, and the march toward war with the Ukraine and Russia expanding its, is reexerting its Soviet empire. We have a bisexual uh, former cocaine addict who is now our president who is leading us down a pathway to moral decay. Um, we have a country that's spending like a, literally, I don't want to blaspheme drunken so sailors because I think drunken sailors wouldn't do as what, what we're doing. Uh, printing money, even spending it incorrectly to provide health care to everybody, which can be done at a fraction of the current cost. No real preventative medicine, forcing abortions to be paid for by all citizens and putting people into memory care, which is basically a fancy thing. They want to make you a memory, which means they want to kill you. Um, and as a physician, I can tell you, even if I uh, had the opportunity to work part-time as a doctor and have a license, I wouldn't, I'm not interested. Uh, you can't even offer uh, volunteer medical care in this country because it's such a noxious system with, uh, with the state licensing authorities out of their mind the malpractice attorneys like predators, uh, the federal government literally criminalizing medicine. So when all these things are added together, uh, I see America as a uh, beast nation that's going to force not only uh, its culture on the whole world, but also the mark of the beast. And we see the rise now of Soviet Union uh, again with Vladimir Putin. A lot of people think he's a hero. He did stop the attack last year, but the re-exertion of the Soviet Empire is happening. And we have the installation now of a clearly non-Christian, Jesuit, satanic pope, the black pope, uh, who has, even to the most basic Christian, says, that doesn't sound Christian to me. So uh, anybody who doesn't understand that we have a Druid, who is our current pope in the Vatican, not my pope, but the current pope, uh, this is right out of the Bible. We're there. All these prophecies from St. Malachi, uh, all the prophecies of the ancient Hebrew writers, uh, even the modern writers are receiving words like Mark Biltz. Many of the books that you put together to analyze the biblical truth, the material that I received on clay and iron, uh, I think we're there. I mean, we're, we're at a point now where we're at the culmination of secular history, and God is basically going to set the record straight here shortly. So uh, tell us what you found. Well, I, I have been doing a study, Dr. Bill, of the prophecies in Revelation, Revelation uh, chapter 13 in particular. In fact, I've zeroed in on just eight verses of that chapter and written the whole book on it. Uh, oh, really? uh, the well, welcome in then betrayal. And the title, of course, refers to the fact that America was set up as a land of freedom and opportunity to uh, provide refuge for the persecuted of Europe to come and that it would later speak as a dragon. Now, a nation speaks through its laws, Dr. Bill. I think you'll agree with that. Uh, absolutely. That's, yeah. how a, that's how a nation speaks. So its laws will become not Christian like the lamb, which it started off as, but they'll become like the dragon. Now, I do believe that this is a very interesting subject. Uh, th th I found 12 identification points that apply only to America and to no other nation on earth. And uh, I do believe that we are seeing now the transition. We, we have witnessed in the last recent years a transition from a lamb-like beast to a dragon-like beast. And this is predicted very clearly in the scripture that a Christian power would turn dragon-like in its laws. Yeah, and we see that in the, even in the comments by Obama, Situation Room Tuesday, where he said, I'm really good at killing, you know, and so we have predator drones killing people. 
we have foreign policies that literally export abortion. The first thing he does is get rid of the Montreal Protocol so we pay for abortions in Kenya and around the world. I mean, everything that happens now with our federal government, which is a proxy for world satanic government, is evil. There's nothing that we do, foreign policy, health care, there's nothing that we do that is not predicated, including the carbon tax garbage, on evil. Everything. Yes, uh, to, to, you know, the, the nation was originally established to uh, provide Christ-like safety and, and concern. Civil union, uh, uh, civil uh, freedom rather, without a king, and religious freedom without a pope. That those two enunciated uh, principles were made very, very clear in the beginning. Right. And, uh, and today we have one who is uh, ruling like a king, like a despot, and we also have uh, the situation where uh, the papal power is coming in and has infiltrated the whole system and controls virtually every organization in the states and, and in the world, yeah. whether it be religious or, or medical or educational. Well, I want to just kind of back it up a bit. Uh, the Pope, most people realize that there's only a few nations that don't have a uh, Rothschild-style bank. Now, they have to understand the Rothschilds, which means Red Shield, they were the Bowers before. Uh, they were gold uh, exchanges uh, hundreds of years ago before the Napoleonic Wars. But the, the banking system was basically handed over to these, quote, Sabbatean Satanistic Jews, which are primarily Khazarian or Ashkenaz, and they are not Semites, number one, but it wouldn't matter what their genetics are, it wouldn't matter if they're Mongolian or Japanese, it matters whether their spiritual DNA, if they're following the words of the Torah and the Pentateuch, and not the words of rabbis that say satanic things, or the Babylonian uh, Zohar, and, uh, the, uh, and these other nasty documents that are read out of the pit of hell. Uh, what's happening is that the, the current Pope and all popes before them were actually, most people don't realize this, but the little kippah on the, on the, the Jews wear for the last thousands of years meant that they were vassals of the Pope. And that the banking system was set up specifically that it's one thing to run all the banks in the world and have billions of dollars, it's quite another thing to own the bankers. And the, even in Russia, the, uh, the banks are run by Sabbatean Satanistic Jews, they're just smart enough not to cross Putin. But other than North Korea, Iran, Syria, and, and Cuba, every single country on earth is run by 17 Satanists, and the Vatican owns it all. Back in a moment. Welcome back, and uh, Johnson, by the way, will be coming back on the 27th on the first hour, which will be 12 to 1 Pacific time, 2 to 3 Central, and 3 to 4 Eastern on Thursday the 27th. Uh, Johnson, you mentioned that there's a number of points that are unique for America uh, in this uh, segment. Can you give us uh, some details of, the, of your study that shows why America is not just peripheral, it's actually central to the end times? Yes, most certainly. Well, as we know, the mark of the beast is going to be the, uh, the crucial dividing point between those who serve man and those who serve God. Uh, and um, America is going to play the initiating role in launching of that for the whole world. Right, but, and uh, the controlling role too, by the way. These data centers like role. the one in, yeah, like the data center up in, in Bluffdale, uh, Utah, that needs 93 million gallons of water just to kill a, cool the supercomputers. This isn't just for American data, it's for Australian data, New Zealand, South African, Indian, Ugandan data, British data. This data is going to really profile everybody on Earth. And what people need to understand that America's technology is right out of the pit of hell. And I've been there, I've actually been in the facilities. We have <clears throat> the nascent form of the Mark of the Beast right now. And when Snowden came out, it's all evident. So let's continue with your list. Okay, now the, the, the first thing that is evident in Revelation 13 is that this beast, now a beast is a political power, comes out of the earth. Now you'll notice in all prophecy uh, that when a beast is mentioned in prophecy, such as in the books of Daniel and Revelation, and Revelation you can never understand without first 
knowing what's in the book of Daniel and vice versa. The, the two are indispensable one to the right. other. Now, when a beast comes up out of the sea, the scripture itself is the interpreter. Uh, Dr. Bill, we never have to guess. We never have to speculate uh, about these uh, these special um, characteristics which are given in Scripture. Uh, the Bible itself says that when it speaks of waters, and that's in Revelation, that the waters is where there's lots of peoples and nations and and uh, and uh, empires, tongues, and so on. In other words, a highly populated area. All the previous beasts of prophecy from Babylon onwards have come out of it, the highly populated old world. The opposite from that is the, la is, the, uh, is the land. And when the Bible speaks about that, it usually speaks about a, a fairly sparsely populated area. So we're looking for a nation, a, a political power to arise, not in the highly populated old world, but in a less populated new world and that's right. one of the clues the first point as we get as to the the location at least and ultimately the identity of the power mentioned that's very good okay next uh, the term beast uh, beast of course I, I did mention that beast uh, represents a uh, a uh, political power well what we're looking at is a an expression that's that's used here in the Bible. Uh, the word therion is the Greek word, and it represents a uh, an animal uh, that has the danger of turning against you. Now there are 44 places in the books of Daniel and Revelation where this expression. That's I'm talking about the Greek Bible here, when it's translated in the Old Testament, at Hebrew into Greek uh, and the Greek in the New Testament. Every, sing, sing, every single time when it mentions a beast, it's speaking of a corporate ruling power. Every time that word is used. Now, it's never applied to a person, it's always applied to an impersonal ruling power whether it be in the book of Daniel or the book of Revelation. There's no other Bible definition. So we have a corporate ruling power arising in the new world. Now, uh, sometimes people will say, well, can it represent a person? It can only represent a person in as much as that person represents the ruling power that he represents. Right. Now, there's, there's another expression, and the, the third identification is another beast. Now, that's where the Greek word allo is used. Now, the choice of the word, the Greek word for another, is very important. It refers always to a one that is different from the one before. Now, the first, but there's two beasts in Revelation 13. One is a, a political religious power, which uh, was going to rule uh, in the old world. And w then we have this new power, which is different uh, in its form. It's purely political, it's Christ-like, it has two horns of a lamb. Now lamb, not two horns of a sheep, uh, which would be so if it was a fully matured power when, when John sees it coming up out of the land. But it, it comes up out of the land as a peaceful, lamb-like power. Lamb-like in youth, lamb-like in its nature, being Christ-like. And it's true, as you go through history, as I've done meticulously, I've been looking at the foundations of all the nations of the earth that we have today. There's only one nation on this planet, only one in all of history, that deliberately formulated its, its uh, existence upon the principles of Christianity. And yeah, this is the one. United States of America. Yeah, even though some of the founding fathers were deists and masons, the building principles were Christian. That is absolutely right. And it was written down. Now, we, we, the expression, he's coming up out of the earth, is not something springing up or, or, or racing out of the earth. It's how it comes up is just as important. The Greek word there is anabonion. Now, what does anabonion mean? It means coming up out of the earth like a plant 
or a seed growing. And it's very, very interesting that American historians themselves said, our nation grew up out of the earth like a plant. And it's almost as though they were looking at the Bible when they wrote it, but independently, in their own minds, they saw the growth of America as like a young, peaceful plant coming up out of the earth, which American history shows uh, in its founding stages it was. Very, very interesting. Now, it has two horns. Now, right through Scripture, horns represent a power and authority. And we have that from the Bible itself. Everything that I'm saying right now is cross-referenced with other Bible texts which give us the true meaning. Now, these verses indicate the second beast exercises authority in two realms. And as the American founders said, they would create a state without a king and they would create, and they would allow freedom of religion without a pope. Two separate horns indicates the separateness of these two powers. And since a lamb's horns also suggest youthful innocence, each would be consistent with civil and religious gentleness and freedom, separation of church and state. Because history shows that when the church gets control of the state or the state gets control of the church, either way, persecution results against minorities. Right. So we've got these horns of power. They're young, they're innocent, uh, lamb-like. Two little horns like those of a lamb. That's the plain English of it. Okay. Now, we then have him speaking as a dragon, this beast. Although he grows up gently with the innocence of youth, he'll become dangerous like a jag dragon. Now, uh, the Bible says that uh, he uses this figure of speech, a dragon, to represent Satan, the dragon, Satan. However, we've got a, a power here speaking as or like a dragon. It's not Satan himself. It's the power that comes up and eventually imitates him. Yeah, we can see that certainly in the actions of America and its current uh, leadership. Obama, Biden, Valerie Jarrett, John Kerry, pretty dragon-like to me. Welcome back, and uh, Jonathan, let's continue. And we're going to continue this dialogue, by the way, next Thursday, the 27th. Um, so uh, people need to grasp there's two houses of Israel, and people say, well, there's a destiny for, you know, people talk about replacement theology. Uh, what we're doing is, I call this completion theology. There's two houses of Israel. There's two houses of, that are called uh, the Hebrew houses, and it's not Jewish. People always refer to Jewish. Jewish is just one house. And uh, America is going to, has the opportunity to bring blessing on the world or curse. And uh, what I see under our current president is we are cursing the world with massive debt, with pushing very quickly toward allowing Russia to expand. There's no real moves to stop them. Uh, and if they had uh, restrained Russia with proper moves after knowing what happened two years ago, Russia wouldn't be in a panic to grab Crimea, and they're probably going to grab Donetsk and Kirkov and other places. But Jonathan, let's let's continue your list because people need to grasp this is not just conjecture. Uh, what you're no. showing here are ac are academically scholarly proof that America is the beast nation that's going to force the mark on the entire world. That is true. <clears throat> Now, as we've noted earlier in the broadcast today, um, this is the second beast of Revelation 13, and another way of identifying it is to know who the first beast is. Now, right. when we go back to, to Daniel, we see four great empires arising, the fourth of which is the Roman Empire, and uh, when the Roman Empire collapsed, the, the Caesar handed over his power and his authority to the Pope of Rome. And uh, even Catholic historians admit that the papacy is a continuation of the Roman Empire. Uh, yeah, there are like, so many like the, historians like who statue, agree on this. Like the Daniel statue is what you're saying. That is right. Now, Daniel predicted that there'd be a period of 1260 days versus years, one day per year in prophecy. And the Protestant reformers from Martin Luther to John Wesley onward all understood this day for a year principle in the prophecies of Daniel and Revelation. 
and the 1260 years of papal supremacy over Europe uh, began in the year 538 when the last of the three, M three countries opposing it were subdued and he became, the Pope became the undisputed ruler of Europe uh, over all the kings of Europe. Now, 1260 years would take his reign to 1798 and as early as 100 years earlier, Bible scholars were recognising that the papal reign was approaching the end of its 1260 year period of rule and with this in mind, they wrote about it and we have their, their books written back in the 1600s. And in fact, not just a few Bible researchers, John Wesley himself wrote in 1754, the second beast has not yet come, though he cannot be far off, for he is to appear at the end of the 1260 years of the first beast. Now he wrote that just before uh, at the end of the papal reign. And in 1798, Napoleon's general Berthier entered the Vatican took the Pope off his throne, threw him into a prison cell where he died, and declared that the papacy was extinct. Great. That was an official declaration. In fact, even the San Francisco Chronicle recorded that the papacy now was abolished. So the first, uh, the wet, deadly wound referred to in Revelation 13 uh, that would later on be healed occurred at the end of that 1260 year period. And the prophecy was that as that power went down into captivity and into uh, uh, imagined oblivion, that the second power would be rising. And at the end of the 1700s, as the Vatican was going down, America was coming up, exactly as the prophecy said. The, the change of scenery shifted to America and America became the spotlight nation of the world. It's very, very accurate the way the Bible describes it. As one beast goes down, the next one comes up. But the first beast will have his deadly wound healed and all the world will wander after him and the second beast will tell the world to do his bit, the bidding of the first beast as he arises back again. Very right, interesting first, prophecy. We have uh, things like the Mount Precipice uh, conclave with 50 imams, 50 rabbis, and 50 uh, Catholic priests uh, on the Lily of the Mountain looks over Bethlehem last November 17th by the current black pope that's a druid. And by the way, people need to understand druid means that you're a follower of the horned god or Satan. So, yes. Yeah, the Duke of, uh, the, the, the uh, Archbishop of Canterbury that married Prince William recently, last year or so, uh, is a druid. Druids and the Druidic Council runs all the religions on earth. All of the financial systems, all of the media systems. Everything is under the power of Satan and this planet, everything. And it's gonna be withdrawn shortly. All of this is, is the way it's, that and people need to understand this. They need to understand that Satan is, is a dark majesty of brilliant evil and uh, the human mind cannot conceive of the brilliance over eons that Satan and his minions have done to destroy mankind. It's like a massive abortionist come here to abort seven billion souls in the womb of the sapphire, the blue planet Earth, that's God's womb for the man's souls. And that's what we're dealing with. Yes. So the next, next sign is? Uh, that the, the second beast will be subordinate to the first beast. The second beast will be able to speak to the whole world and the world will take notice. Now, there's only one nation today that can speak to the whole world and the whole world takes notice. Over here in New Zealand, we have an expression, when America sneezes, the whole world catches a cold. Right. However, although the, the, the second beast, the, the second power that's going to arise in the new world is going to speak to the whole world and tell them to, to follow the mark of the beast, the second power, America, is going to be subordinate to the, to the first beast. What he does is going to be done for the first beast. He's going to be under the direction of the first beast. Uh, he's out in the front. It's America's authority, but his authority is very closely controlled. He's granted his power in the presence of the first beast. He's on a leash, as it were. So. This is a prophecy that America will be subordinate to and on the leash of the Vatican power, the first beast. Uh, 
and uh, all of the worship is going to go, uh, all of the obedience is going to go back to the Vatican, but America is going to have the power and influence to declare that the world do this. Right. In That's fact, what the is prophecy what we see is Obama saying. pushing Abbas and the uh, Palestinians to accept the state of Israel. Right now, the Palestinians don't even accept that Israel exists. Uh, it's not on the maps if you go to Qatar or Saudi Arabia. So what I see happening is a peace treaty that's going to partition the land is parallel to the end of the, the current financial system that's, that's about to crash this year and next. And there'll probably be multiple crashes, one, not just one. And uh, when that happens, it's all by design. It's tied in with the uh, current expression of power by Russia. And, of course, the sanctions back and forth will destroy the economy and say, look at this, Russia did it. And, of course, they want an excuse because they have already in the wings the replacement authentication system. The word for the next few years is authentication. If you don't present your biometric retinal scan, iris scan, digital fingerprints, terahertz body scan, you're not getting in your bank account. You're not going to that movie. You could literally stand stark naked with a little hand, with wallet or anything. And with your biometrics, you can travel on an airliner or do anything, buy things online. But if you if they press Alt Delete, you don't exist. Uh, please continue. Yes, it's as, it's as simple as that. Now it's very evident from this prophecy that <clears throat> this second power, uh, and uh, perhaps I, I should inc include uh, a, a re a rehash of what I've already said here. This second power rises out of the earth, out of a sparsely populated wilderness region compared with the old world. It's going to be an impersonal ruling power, and that Greek word therion shows that to be so. It's another ruling power of the same kind. It's coming up gently and peaceably like a plant. It possesses two strengths represented by two horns of a lamb which are separate from each other. One is religious, one is political. Political freedom, religious freedom. And these are young, innocent, never before declared to be part of a nation's makeup. But in America we see it for the first time in all history. That's a fantastic introduction for our discussion next Thursday. Jonathan, now it's great to have you back. We'll have you on regularly at least twice a month, if not more often, whichever you'd like. Uh, we need to get uh, this information into our hearts and souls and to get prepared. Get yourself off of the toxic polypharmacy. Get on Nutrimeds. Take care of your body, your mind, and spirit. Read your Bible. Read these books from BeforeUs.com, from Jonathan. BeforeUs, B-E-F-O-R-E-U-S.com. And Jonathan will be back Thursday the 27th. Coming up tomorrow, a major update from Carl Gallup's on... The uh, Rabbi Kaduri prophecies, etc., and the death of Ariel Sharon. Uh, we've got some amazing information to share on this. You don't want to miss it tomorrow. Back tomorrow with remarkable wellness products and nutraceuticals and healing for your spirit, too.